Good day, students. Today, we shall discuss about Fermat's principle of extremum path in different cases. First, let us recall the principle. According to Fermat's principle of extremum path, when light travels from one point to another through a set of media, of all the possible paths, light will choose that path for which time taken is extremum. That is, time taken can be a maximum, a minimum, or stationary time. Here, we discuss the three cases of elliptical mirror. A spherical mirror having curvature greater than that of an elliptical mirror and a spherical mirror having curvature smaller than that of an elliptical mirror. First, the elliptical mirror. In this case, the optical path is always stationary. Let us consider an elliptical mirror as shown. It has two focal points, F1 and F2. They are two conjugate points. That means it can be reversed. Light emerging from F1 can be reflected upon the points O, O prime, O double prime, or O triple prime. All the reflected light from different points will converge towards F2. That is, all rays leaving from F1 after reflection will converge at F2. That is the peculiarity of these conjugate points. For all these rays, they obey angle of incidence I will be equal to angle of reflection R. That means the incident ray plus reflected ray gives the same value for all these paths. In effect, F1 O F2 is identical to F1 O prime F2 Again, it is identical to F1 O double prime F2, which is again identical to F1 O triple prime F2. Hence, we say that the optical path is stationary. In the second case, we have a spherical mirror with curvature smaller than that of an ellipsoid. Here, the optical path obtained will be a minimum. For that, let us consider an ellipse as shown here. It has two focal points, F1 and F2. We are placing a spherical mirror of smaller curvature than that of an ellipsoid to one of its edges. Here, let us assume light ray emerging from F1 to take two different paths, F1, O, F2, and F1, M prime, F2. These two paths fall on the spherical mirror. We need to calculate the path difference between these two paths. For that, we take into consideration another point, M double prime, upon the ellipse and a line M double prime F2. Path difference is obtained as F1 O F2 minus F1 M prime F2. F1 O F2 is identical to F1 M double prime plus M double prime F2, right? So, the first term is replaced as such. Now, the second term, F1 M prime F2, can be replaced as F1 M double prime plus M double prime M prime plus M prime F2. Okay. You see some similar terms coming up and they can be cancelled out. This gives us M double prime F2 minus 
m double prime m prime plus m dub m prime f2. This is a negative value, which means path difference is a minimum. Here we have taken into consideration the triangle m prime f2 m double prime. Here m double prime m prime plus m prime f2 is the base plus hypotenuse, which is always greater than the altitude m double prime f2. Thus, we can state that optical path is a minimum in a spherical mirror of curvature smaller than that of an ellipsoid. The next case, we have a spherical mirror with curvature greater than that of an ellipsoid, where the optical path becomes a maximum. For that, let us take into consideration an ellipse with focal points f1, f2. We have matched a spherical mirror of greater curvature with the edge of the ellipse. And light is made to fall on two points of this spherical mirror. We get two paths, F1, O, F2, and F1, M double prime, F2. We are going to find the path difference between these two rays. For that, we have to take into consideration an additional point, M prime. Okay, so path difference F1, O, F2, minus F1, M double prime, F2. It can be rewritten as the first term is replaced in terms of F1 M prime plus M prime F2 because optical paths are stationary in an ellipse. Okay. Now the second term is replaced by F1 M double prime F2 is replaced by F1 M prime minus M double prime M prime plus m double prime f2. Similar terms can be cancelled, which leaves us m prime f2 plus m double prime m prime minus m double prime f2. Here, the path difference is a positive value, which means path difference is a maximum. We have taken into consideration the triangle m prime f2 m double prime in which m double prime m prime plus m prime f2 is the base plus hypotenuse which is always greater than m double prime f2 the altitude of the triangle. Thus we can state that optical path in a spherical mirror with greater curvature than that of an ellipsoid is a maximum. Hope you have understood the Fermat's principle of extremum path in all these cases. Thank you.